Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out yet another laser. This is the Laser Storm S5 from Pergear. It's what I would consider more of your entry level laser. It's lower cost than some of the others I've looked at at this channel. So if you're interested in my thoughts and what this machine can do, stay tuned. So I've been messing around with my laser engravers for over five years now. And I've had a lot of fun. I've learned a number of things. Uh, recently, I've started checking out the diode lasers as they've kind of come up in power and speed and they've become interest as how, what, how can you incorporate them into your shop and uh, how can you get, uh, you know, kind of dip your toe into the water uh, without as much expense. So I was excited when Pergear reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to check out our, one of our lasers? Uh, and I said, yes. And so they sent me their Laser Storm S5. Um, they did provide this at no cost to me, but they only asked that I do an honest review. So it is a five watt dial based laser. Uh, it, uh, it operates off of a, your typical stepper motors with belts and pulleys. You have roughly a 400 by 410 millimeter cutting area. So that's about 15 and a half, 15 and three quarter inches uh, square or rectangular. Uh, it does have a a uh, controller on base that uh, can operate through Laser GRBL or uh, Lightburn is my preferred software. Uh, Laser GRBL being the free version, uh, free software that's out there. Lightburn does cost you a little bit extra, but uh, in my opinion, it is well worth the extra cost. Uh, however, this one can operate standalone as uh, it does have a TF card slot where you can load your G-code files on, uh, enter them into the laser, and then they provide this touch screen uh, that allows uh, menuing to uh, go through home the machine, uh, select your job, and uh, operate the machine from there. Uh, the build of this machine is fairly straightforward. They do provide you with a pretty decent user manual. manual. It is in three different languages, so uh, they've put some thought there. And I found that the translation um, uh, did, it did pretty good. Um, there were a few sections on here uh, where they, they provide pretty good diagrams, but they're, they're kind of small. So they do also offer the manual uh, on the, the card that comes with the laser. Uh, there you can actually uh, um, in, uh, zoom in on the, the digital file of it. So that's something to look at. Um, but just read through it, make sure you understand the instructions. A couple, there was one area where I had a part reversed, but um, that was pretty evident when I got to another piece. And so just take your time to make sure you get all the pieces aligned correctly. Um, all the markings are gonna be up and facing towards you. The build should only take you about, I would gonna say maybe about half hour, 45 minutes. It depends on your experience with assembling this machine or these machines. And uh, they do provide all the tools, but sometimes if you have some of your own uh, metric nut drivers, that helps as well. Uh, but the, the overall assembly does not take too long. Just take your time. Uh, the only problem I ran into it is actually on the cable management side. They do provide uh, mounting points. There's holes to add zip ties and uh, that works well. However, when I, I found when the laser gantry was moved all the way to the, the rear of the machine, the cable along the side was pulling on the limit switch. So I needed to cut into the webbing just a little bit to give some more cable relief. And then I just wrapped that back up with some electrical tape. Uh, and once that was in place, uh, it wasn't pulling on any of the, the cables. They do generally stay out of the way as long as you've got some room to the left side. Um, only other complaint is the USB cable and the power cable, they plug into the top of the control board. Uh, it would be great if those were on the side so they were more out of the way of the buttons and not sticking straight up. But you know, that's, a, that's something fairly minor. Uh, other than that, I, you know, the quality seems to be pretty decent. Um, I had no problems getting it square and level. And uh, from there, the machine works really well. Now when using lasers, you do need to be mindful of uh, some safety features. Um, you are shooting a laser into material and that does tend to cause it to uh, you know, vaporize the material or blast away the material depending on what you're doing. Uh, and so um, it's a high intensity light. Um, this does get moved down uh, to focus it, but and there's still a slight gap, but the shroud does do a pretty good job of containing most of that. And then this dark red acrylic plate on front does block most of the light, but allow you just enough to be able to see the project. However, it is a class four laser. 
that can cause harms to your eyes. So you want to be mindful of um, people. You don't want to watch that beam. You don't want to stare at that beam a lot. Um, this will help protect protect your eyes. However, I do strongly recommend you get uh, a secondary protection and that would be some laser rated safety goggles. The other thing is that especially on organic materials such as wood or leather, um, paper materials, things like that, it is going to create smoke. So you want to be operating this either in an area where you have good airflow like a, my garage shop out here. I can open up the doors and the windows or turn the exhaust fan on. Or if you're operating it inside, you may want to consider some sort of enclosure and then piping that out through a vent. Um, it's just not good to breathe in any sort of uh, smoke and particulate. Um, and then it does have an emergency stop button. Um, so even if you're burning materials that are okay, sometimes things happen, you get flare ups, you get flash up. Uh, the emergency stop button is your first, uh, first guard against that. You hit that, you can move the things out of the way. And it's also smart to have some sort of fire suppression and that can just be a simple fire extinguisher nearby. Uh, so the big important question is what can you do with this laser? Well, um, the reason I really enjoy playing around with these dial lasers is they excel at engraving and engraving with detail. And so I uh, messed around with a number of different uh, items, uh, just seeing what sort of fine detail they can get. This laser is has a focus point of 0 0.08 by 0 0.1 millimeters square. And so that can get some fairly fine point detail. And the other thing, and the best thing you can do is run a raster test for engraving, a rast and, and then a, also a speed test for cutting. And what that does is it takes various scales of speed and power and puts it into a grid so you can quickly compare um, what kind of shading you're gonna get or how well it's gonna cut at a certain number of speed and power and passes. Um, this is Baltic birch plywood. If I did this with oak or maple plywood, it's gonna, the scale is gonna look different. And so to have a guide of what you want to uh, engrave or what you need for power and speed for cutting, it's best to run some tests before you um, put it through your actual material. I've found that for cutting, um, eighth inch material, um, at least in the Baltic birch plywood, I was able to go at um, about six millimeters per second at 100% power and three passes cut straight through the pieces dropped right out. Now I did have this elevated and that helps the airflow um, and that will also allow you to get clean cuts on both sides. If you had this laying flat on the surface, you would get some gassing and um, bounce back on the, from behind. So it's good to elevate it and get those clean cuts. Quarter inch material also cut pretty well. Uh, I did have to increase it up to five passes and then the square uh, mostly cut out. It, it dropped out once I pushed it through. The circle did cut through quite well. However, you do get more charring on that uh, due to the increased passes. Um, this does have a fan that blows through to help uh, improve some airflow. Um, what would be great to see, and I believe they're coming out with this now, is to have an air assist add-on that would actually focus a beam of air um, right on the cutting area. And that what that does is help clear the smoke and debris out of the way and uh, keep it from flaring up to get cleaner cuts. So um, that's something to check out on their website that's not included in this base one. But as it is, it does a pretty good job cutting uh, eighth inch Baltic birch, quarter inch Baltic birch. Your mileage is gonna vary based on your material. A denser wood, uh, different types of plywood have different glues into them uh, that greatly um, affect its cutting speed and ability. Um, so again, you wanna test each type for both cutting and engraving and uh, make your adjustments from there. We did uh, try to do a more intricate design uh, and uh, we cut this kind of Celtic knot uh, tea light holder out of some eighth inch Baltic birch. Uh, as you can see from the video, it did cut pretty well. It took about half an hour to go through it all and there were a few spots and what you see there, and this is really evident in plywood, is where you get areas where there was maybe a patch put in the, in the uh, wood or maybe there's a gap of extra glue. Um, sometimes it'll just struggle through a few pieces and sections of it. Um, yeah, on this one, I just kind of went with an X-Acto blade, cleaned up those spots, popped it back out. Um, but you know, it took half an hour to cut this piece out. Not terrible for uh, someone crafting and just doing some things on the side. Um, but if you uh, were really to get these into production, um, that's when you kind of maybe would be stepping out of this machine up into a more powerful one. Uh, a 10 watt diode would definitely help, but he possibly then into, into a higher power CO2. 
Again, with engraving, uh, this uh, does well on organics, but it can interact with some metals. And generally that's with metals that have some sort of coating on it. So anodized or painted aluminum and steel, stainless steel that has the proper coating on it will interact with other things. Um, but generally metal, you're not gonna actually, I don't consider it engraving, I consider it marking. Um, and so your mileage will vary on metals. However, you can use various materials such as Surmark or Lasermark is a commercially available product that you apply a, a thin coating to it. You laser engrave over that coating that fuses that material and turns it generally dark, dark color like black or gray. Uh, and then you wash off the rest and that'll leave a nice etching. Um, so overall, I think this is a great starter laser for someone that wants to play around with some engravings, play around with some cutting without taking up a lot of space and a lot of money uh, to get into the hobby. Uh, I hope this video has been informative to you and if you are interested in this laser, I will have links down below to both Pergear's website as well as Amazon links. Uh, yes, they are some affiliate links. Those do help me out with this channel at no cost to you. If you do intend on purchasing this, I appreciate you using those. If you do have questions about this laser or anything else from my workshop or past information I've shared, go ahead, leave a comment down below. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. Uh, if you liked this video, felt it was informative, hit that like button. Uh, consider giving me a subscription as I'll do more of these videos, whether it's on machinery or projects or just general information. I like to share what's coming out of my workshop. I try to keep it a bit informative. I try not to be too salesy. And so I hope you appreciate that. If so, again, uh, always appreciate that encouragement of likes and subscribes. If you have any questions, again, leave them down below and uh, look forward to seeing you next time.